In this video, we're going to focus on how we can put in here a total sum at the very top of a stack bar chart. And when we click on this, it will be recalculated. And we'll make sure that this is dynamic or soft coded so that when you add more data sets, it will recalculate and consider those as well. So to do this, the first thing what we need is our boiler template, which you can find here on chartjs3.com getting started. Once you're on here, copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. Next, if you have or if you're interested in getting the source code of this video and many more, check out my page one page. And of course, got a question, put it on this board. So let's start working on it. So we're going to scroll down here and for this case, we're going to use three data sets, but we could have more. So it will make it completely dynamic. So let's copy this data set, comma, paste, comma, paste, and then just remove one of those, of a, leave one color on there. I'm just going to get the blue one here. The other one is black, and this one will be top color, which is the red color. Save, refresh. Oh. Let's see what's going on. Probably I have uh, forgotten a comma or something. Number 70. Oh, there we are. Save that. Refresh. Oh, what is this? Hold on. All right, my bad. I forgot here. The bracket. All right, comma, save, refresh. There we are. That looks nice. Next, what I want to do, I want to stack them up all together. So. What I will do here, x scale, put a comma there, stack equals uh, stacked. I have to make sure it's stacked, not stack. And this is true. Copy this, put a comma here, paste. There we are. So now we have that. And what I want to do next is to make sure we always have a little bit of space here. So on the y scale, I'm going to say grace. And let's say five, a value of five. So basically five. If there's a five, there will be space on it. And as you can see here, it will always keep a little bit space. There we are. All right, now we can start to work on the plugin. So it's a comma, I'm going to call this plugin, uh, plugins, and then we're going to give this a name and we could call this our total uh, sum label or something like that, doesn't really matter. Then we say constant, we make this a constant variable here, ID is the value. Then we're going to see here uh, after data sets, draw chart arcs and login options. Then let's close that. There we are. We don't need that one. Then we're going to do a object destructuring. For the object destructuring, we're going to see here the chart. Then what I'm going to say here is the CTX. What do I need more is probably the data. And then the scales, and specifically, I'm going to work on the Y scale because we want to uh, get the Y coordinates of all of these items. So what are we going to do here? And this is the real tricky part. What I need is basically the Y coordinate of every of this data point here from all three data sets. So I want to have basically an array with three of these, then another array with three of these, and etc. etc. So we have in total of seven and what i want to grab eventually is the lowest value and let me explain why the lowest value the lowest value is basically how canvas works canvas works that the coordinate here in this corner is zero x zero y zero so since we're going to work with the y scale which is the vertical scale we just focus on the y so the y at the very top is zero the y at the very bottom will depend on the length or height of our canvas and i think this is about 200 or 300 pixels so let's double check that you can see a 350 in this case so that will be 350 pixels so the lowest value is the highest here well the here below we're getting very close to 350 so that's why we need to get these values here and then eventually we want to get the la the lowest value out of the tree and that will be our y position sounds very complicated but it is not that complicated with the exception of the formula. So what I'm going to do here now is, first of all, I'm going to create here a, uh, well, let's get the set of data, the data point, or specifically the Y data of the first row. So what I'm going to do here, so I'll say here constant, 
let's say here data point row and this will be I'm going to use data because I have here the data and I say dot data sets and then here instead of index I'm going to say here dot map I'm going to use the map method to create the array because the map method makes an array instantly for us so what I'm going to say here data set and then the index and then here function error expression and then we're going to put it in here so what I would like to do here is basically get the following detail I'm going to say here console log and then what I'm going to get is here the chart dot get data set meta and then I'm going to say here this will be the index and then dot data and for this data I'm going to say data uh, data point zero and we get the y so once we get this you'll see here right now we are getting multiple times the value but these are three unique values because they're looping it all the time so what i could do here is maybe say return this and once i do this i can do here console log and let's see what our data point row gives us once we did that, you can see here it gets a lot of it. Maybe we just hide this to avoid the confusion. We just get this one here. And look what we have. We get here three data points here. However, look what happens if I select on one of those. For example, I remove the blue one. What will happen is we get a negative here. So as I said earlier, the, well, let me explain why the negative. The negative is basically hiding it from the chart area. However, what I want to avoid in this case, we don't want this because this would be the new lowest later on and it would be very confusing. So I'm going to use a trick for this by saying if it is hidden like this, the value should not be negative. It should be just 1000. And I'm taking 1000 because my canvas here is not, uh, the height is not higher than 350. So I know that is good. So if you have a huge screen, you put it in 10,000, 20,000, whatever you want, as high as possible, so it will never be shown on your chart area. Anyway, that is what I want to avoid, because you can see here eventually if I have all of those, and, and this one as well, we get all of these values. So what I want to do then here is create, create a uh, hoisted value. So we say let y coordinate, and uh, this coordinate, it will be the following. We're going to say if and we're going to grab here what exactly we can just grab this if this item dot hidden equals true if that is the case the y coordinate will be 1000 pixels and as I said earlier it could be higher if you have a larger screen so just double check your screen whatever the height is and else y coordinate will be equal to whatever we have in here so once we do this then we want to return here the y coordinate all right so now if i save this refresh we have this if i select something here there you are it shows now 1000 so you can see here the lowest point that we're going to grab later out from this array will be this value here all right so now you have part one what i want to do now is of course i want to loop through all of these data points because we don't want only one row we need in total of seven in this case so that's what we're going to do next so for this what i'm going to do here is the following we're going to say here and then i guess if we're going to put in uh, we'll be using here a for loop but for that before we even do that one I want to make sure that this value that we save will still be stored elsewhere so what I'm going to say here not a hoisted value we're going to say a constant y hidden equals an array and this array is blank and all what I will do here is basically I'm going to say here hidden dot push so we're going to push this value in here so we will keep that in there because now we're going to create a for loop so we say for and we say here uh, let i equals zero and then we're going to loop through it as long as i 
then we want to calculate the data set or the data points. So to make it very simple, I'm going to go into data and say labels. And I assume, this is very important, I assume you have seven data points, so seven labels as well. So I assume it's from that point on. If you don't have that, find a more suitable way. This is just a simple way for me here to explain this video. So we say data.labels.length. And then we're going to say I++ to increment. And then what I will do is I'm going to cut out this, put it in here. Since this is a block, so this will be not anymore known outside of this specific code block. That's why we're pushing the value into the Y hidden here that we hoisted up at the very top. All right. Once we have this, we have all of this, we can now soft code this zero to I, and then we should have now uh, additional information. Uh, let's see. The Y hidden is a data row. Then I have a feeling that this needs to move probably inside of our item here. Return, let me double check, or no, just after that. Just between, make sure it's nested within the for loop. And not after, or else it will not be recognized because it will not say, uh, find this data point. All right, so let's cross check this to say here, console log, y hidden. And maybe this y hidden is not really the proper name. Could give a better name, but that's all right. So once we did this, we get here an array with seven data points and all of them basically holding the rows of our data points here. All right, so now we have the most crucial part. It was the hardest part, basically. Now we can work on creating or drawing the next item. So let's see what we're going to do here now. So what I want to do here now, I want to do another for loop or not another for loop, but a for each loop. So we say data dot data sets index zero. And the reason we can use here index zero is basically because it is just the same. Uh, there's all, every one of these data sets have the same data, uh, amount of data. So six or seven data points to be exact. All right, so what I'm going to do here then is, since this is a for each loop, I say your data dot for each. Then we're going to say here for every data point, comma, we have the index, function arrow expression, and then here, we can get the value. So as I said, we have this row here and I want to get only one value because this value, if you're wondering what does it represent, it is basically the Y coordinate from the tooltip caret pointer. So that is exactly where it points and that indicates if something is here. So if it's gone, it doesn't point anymore and that's basically what we're doing. So we're just borrowing those Y coordinates. All right. So now we have this. Let's start to say ctx.save. And then we're going to say here, we're going to give it a font. So we're going to say here, um, 12 pixels. Make Let's make this bold, 12 pixels, sans serif, because that's the font that ChargeJS uses. And then we're going to say here, ctx.fill text. Give it a color. And in this case, I'll just make it black. Very straightforward, nothing special. ctx.fill text. And in the fill text, we're going to Oh, sorry, this is the fill style. This is for the background color or for the color. Fill text is to put in the color. And here will be basically a text. And we have here an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So the X coordinate will be very simple. And the reason why is because this will be the Y coordinates that we need to uh, fine tune. But the X coordinates are straight forward because they are all same. They're all stacked chart data points. So this x coordinates always in the center consistent or center center of like this here as you can see here the carrot is always in the center of the bar so what i will do here is just for every data point or i'm just going to grab this i'm going to put it in here we're going to say here for every of these index so i'm going to borrow this and then this index here we can just say zero since they're all same in the, for every data set, this doesn't matter. All that matters is the data point position. So then we're going to get dot y, uh, dot, sorry, dot x. So for our other item, what I need here is the exact value. Let's do this 100 for now. 
if I save this refresh all right there we are you can see it starts to work nicely now let's start to grab the Y hidden and what I want to do now with the Y hidden I've got a constant uh, Y position will be what exactly I'm going to use here a trick say math dot min and then I'm going to say here the rest operator that's triple dot Y hidden what this does is look and we have to make sure that's of that row every time so every row look what is the lowest value of the three and the one that that is put that in here that will be the new position for the y so let's save that refresh there we are as you can see here it starts to work nicely and it reacts if you're hiding something now let's put in the value instead of a basic text so how do we do that so we have here basically this value we could just uh, get this y position if you put it in here refresh we get something here i want to position it in the center let's do that as well ctx uh, text align put it in the center and at the end here maybe i should say ctx dot uh, restore to undo everything that we did <coughs> sorry so now what i want to do here refresh there we are we have this but these are just the coordinates the y coordinates of the item let's convert the y coordinates into whatever this y coordinate would represent as the value on the y scale in this case it would be maybe 54 55 so let's convert this so we're going to say here and this is the reason why we had this y value ready so we say y dot get the pixel or oh, sorry get the value for the pixel that we have basically so once we do this let's save that refresh we can see here all right it shows exactly is this 36 that is correct this one's supposed to be 18 but let's fine tune this by round the numbers to a um, to zero decimal so we say here two fixed decimal of zero save refresh all right that looks better let's see if i hide something it recalculates itself and that is correct do this again if we do that there we are all right so what i want to do now and this is the most important one is to push it a bit up so we're going to say here for the position we say here negative minus 12 why we're going up remember this is closer to zero so the closer we're going to zero the higher we go there we are i think that looks quite good final thing what i want to do is i want to test this so what i'm going to do is I'm just going to add up here a another data point remove the additional comma that i have here save that refresh and as you can see here now we have 12 let's hide that one now nine six three uh, nothing basically and let's play around if i hide some show some you can see here it recalculates itself gives some nice animation as well and understands exactly uh, what the new value is and that's it